Do you know what's the secret to make good electronic dance music? The kick drum. Today I want to show you how you can turn this into this. So you might be asking yourself, how does he do this? He just pressed one knob. Well, that's just a little trick. Here is a big effect rack and this effect rack is available as a free download for you. Just follow the link here in the description. In this video, I will show you how the rack was made and how each and every single step adds up to the full picture of a well-rounded kick drum and bass for peak time techno. So let's start in the very beginning. What do we have? We have a 909 kick drum. That's the most simplest of all kick drums, yet the most powerful for techno. And you can never go wrong with that. So if I turn all the effects off, you will notice it still sounds like the classic 909. So what we have is a nice transient, some nice mid area and not too much compression on the drum. You can see it's kind of going down here. So what we want to do now is get some compression, get some more tonal character, have some kind of distortion in there, then EQ a little bit and shape the kick drum the way we want to. So the first instance of this rack is a saturator and you can control it with this knob here, as you can see. And it's basically on the sign fold with almost the same drive in as output. So that means our signal doesn't get louder, which is very important and is called gain staging. So the first saturator, if we have a listen. It definitely adds a lot of character to the kick drum. It puts up this kind of mid-range power knock right on the hit a little bit and also focuses a little bit more on the lows and kind of warms them up a little bit. So very, very important, this not too strong saturator in the beginning. The next effect I have here is a compressor. And what I wanna do here is just press everything together a little bit after the saturation. And you can see here, compressor one, we can set the threshold and the ratio. The attack and release are kind of set like this already, but obviously you can go into the effects and change them up as you want to. So now you can hear, thanks to the long attack, we kind of get a little bit more transient and a little bit more focus on the hit. And we can move on to the next effect, which is another saturator. And it's right here, saturation two, dry wet again. And it's set to hard curve with identical gain staging here as in the first one. And this one, this saturator is here to give this kind of very distorted feeling to the kick drum. So if we have a listen, if I activate it, What we're getting is this very distorted feeling, also a lot of overtones. And obviously here you can choose how intense you want this effect to happen. Maybe you only want it like this. Or maybe you want to go full power for a very dark and maybe almost even industrial techno-like track. I like to go with something like this here and have a look at the next effect, which is a audio effect rack. And this one is pretty, pretty nice to give your kick drum the kind of texture and feeling that is more unique to your drum, right? So first of all, we have this texture chain here using the erosion and some more effects to clean out the signal a little. And you can control it over here with the texture volume and the noise frequency, as you can see, it moves around the erosion. So let's have a listen first. Just this little bit of dirt on the kick drum is always working very nice. So the next one is this hybrid reverb and it's basically a drum room 
You might remember the video about hybrid reverb some weeks ago. This is the exact same drum room, works very well. Just make sure you really don't have any low end in your reverb on the kick drum. This will mess up everything. So please, please, please be aware of that. And yes, notice that you can control the volume of the room. So setting the kick drum in a kind of room for me is very important because on a lot of instruments it's very obvious that you want to have reverb on it because it might sound super cool and big. But on the kick drum it's a little counterintuitive because you always say you don't want reverb on bass stuff, right? You, especially not on your kick drum. But that's only half of the truth. As I said before, you should be very, very careful not having any low end in your reverb, but it's definitely helpful to have some kind of small room on the kick drum. So if you wanna know more about how to set up good drum rooms, then check out the hybrid reverb video on the channel. Next up, we have this EQ, it's a little EQ curve. We have some, just a little bit boost in the low end and um, most importantly, we have those two bell filters here that we can move around like this. And this is for taking away a little bit of the muddy area of the bass drum, which might be around the 200, 500 hertz, somewhere that's the typical area. And this is for boosting the click just a little bit. And for sure, again, you can adjust the gains here for your needs, right? But I only have 16 macros here, so. <laughs> All right, so this is what the kick drum sounds now with our EQ on. Right, this just makes everything a little cleaner and is a good starting point for you to add more into that EQ curve and make it a little more detailed and take out the exact right frequencies that your kick drum doesn't need. So next up, what does every techno kick drum need? It's obviously the reverb rumble underneath or any type of rumble most of the times made with a reverb to have this very techno feeling. So what this is, is this kind of rumble chain with a hybrid reverb and a amplifier, some side chaining, which is connected to the dry chain of the audio effect rack and an auto filter. Lastly, we have an EQ8 here to take out some frequencies again. And let's have a look at what we can do with the macro. So first of all, obviously we have the volume here. Then we have the rumble size, which is basically the size of the reverb. And it will decide on how the groove of your rumble will be. So if we have a listen to only the rumble. You can hear those slight tonal changes and especially if you add the kick drum, you will hear this kind of different movement in the rumble. Then we have the rumble high cut, which is the auto filter and basically decides on how much of kind of bass frequencies you want on top of your low end rumble. So this could sound like this. So depending on the style of track you're making, this could be very helpful. And then we have this bell cut here. And it makes a lot of sense to set this bell cut exactly to the double frequency of the kick drum. What do I mean by that? Well, for example, imagine you have a G sharp kick drum, which in this case we have. So the double frequency of our sub frequency from the kick drum will be not 50, which is the sub frequency, but 100 Hertz. So at 100 Hertz, our kick drum is most likely to have some kind of punch area that doesn't have to be this way, but it is oftentimes. So now we can go into the rumble and just lower a little bit around the 100 Hertz area. But in general, you should check on where your kick drum has the punch in the bass area around the 100 and 200 Hertz, and then cut this in the rumble here. So at the very end, we have this glue compressor here and a utility to just set back the gain a little bit We could because we raised the gain within the whole chain to get to the soft clipping spot where we reach the zero dB and the compressor starts soft clipping. So we want to go down just a little bit so we still 
fit in the mix, right? So our glue compressor puts everything, the kick, the rumble, the transients, everything a little more together. And you can set the threshold here. And the final gain is back here, depending on how you've worked. This might be necessary to raise or lower a little bit. So if we have a listen now. This is what our kick drum sounds like now. And that's the whole magic. Also, as a little reward for sticking around, here's a nice serum preset for techno bass lines. It sounds like this. And you should definitely check out this trick. I put an OTT on here, only 20, 22% here to just emphasize a little on the on the opening of the filter right to get this kind of clickiness in the bass line and this adds up perfectly with our fully strong kick drum now have fun using our kick drum rack and put any kick drum in there you want to depending on your settings you will always get some nice results and let us know what you want to see next on the channel. Any problems you're facing in music production, we are happy to help you. And until then, have a nice time and keep making music.